Hi, I just wanted to make a short video about the RHCSA exam, the Red Hat Certified System Administrator, so the X200 exam in 2025 to show you uh, what I did wrong, what I should have done better and give you some tips on your exam, how to learn for, uh, for it, what I learned and what you can apply to maybe have a better experience and have a good grade in your exam. So yeah, I will start rambling a bit, but uh, I will post some nice materials for you to get started learning and study the same stuff I studied, look at the same kind of videos. So I will link um, all of that in the description below. Uh, below this video so do check that out so yeah this exam is for let's say beginner system administrators in Linux it looks great on your CV so a lot of employers uh, like to see this on uh, your CV so it's a very nice exam that you can take and the best part is it's not that hard so what I've done was I did I think two courses on Udemy um, about uh, the RHCSA. The course itself, uh, if you buy it, is it's very expensive. And I found the courses on Udemy were very extensive. You learned about a lot of things, but not uh, not all of it was in the exam. Also, there was a lot of things that were not very exam related so you didn't really have to use it in the exam and they were also outdated in uh, in a way so what i would do differently was would be to just stay on youtube and see what the exam leaks look like so that you get the feeling for how the exam actually looks like this is very good if you have some kind of basis in Linux. If you don't have any basis in Linux, so you don't know how to move a file, how to co uh, how to copy a file from one place to another, please do go ahead and watch a video tutorial, very extensive t tutorial about Linux or Linux for beginners, so that you can wrap your hand around those topics. So uh, yeah, please, please do that at the beginning. But if you are not very knowledgeable, but at the beginner level or, uh, or at the basic level, I would suggest going through YouTube videos so that you can see how the exam looks like and then you can further dive in to those topics. So uh, you can focus on areas that you can actually find in the exam. That would be my approach. What I have done was, okay, I went through the courses, uh, learned a lot of stuff and then at the very end before I looked into booking my exam I went on YouTube and see uh, and saw what kind of materials it's actually needed for the exam. Uh, I will now share with you what I got in my exam, what kind of topics came into my exam, where I struggled and what you can maybe do different than me to get a better grade or maybe to focus more on those topics so that you can get you know a nice grade or at least pass the exam successfully so let's get into that the first thing that i messed up in the exam was that i used uh, nm2e so the GUI to set up the uh, network interface. The very first thing you have, you will have two nodes on your on your computer that you can access via SSH or you can open a console, a Linux console like a virtual machine and access the, the node directly from there. My mistake was that I, I tried to do net, the network managing with NM2E. That was a big mistake because I got zero points and I also managed to pass the exam with 0% on, on uh, network management because the network configuration, even though the IP was there as it was supposed as given in the question, they didn't take it. So I think the right approach, and don't get me wrong, uh, this is what I would do on the second try, 
you can maybe research this on uh, uh, on your own terms i think the better approach would have been to you to just use nmcli and just set up the the network like that and not use nm2 at all even though nm2 is but like all right it works it you set it uh set up a network with that and it's quite easier compared to you know uh, writing nmcli con mod uh, eth0 whatever ipv4 dot addresses and so on so yeah it's don't use it uh, i learned the actual hard way to just be in an exam and see you get zero percent so i got very very uh worked up because when i saw the results oh i got the results in the same day they say in three business days i got my result in about one or two hours after i finished the test so that was pretty quick maybe it depends on how many people are taking the exam so yeah i got the the questions uh the uh, results in uh, about three hours that was the first topic so network management then you get uh, in the exam something like um, user setup you have to set some users up oh before you set up the users um, you have to set up um, the default repository so you have to know how to set the yam repos so in etc uh, slash yam dot uh, uh, repo dot d uh, you open up the i think it's red hat dot repo and you have to enter app stream and base os so you have to learn about that how to set it up this is the very first uh, not the very first the second thing you will do uh, in your in your exam uh, the question will ask you to configure to configure this uh, this uh, this default re repository so yeah that that's the second thing they will uh, they will ask you to do uh, all right after that you will get maybe a cron cron d crony um, uh, ntp server so you have to set up an ntp server to fetch uh, uh, fetch the system clock from so you open up etc crony uh, dot crony d and then crony conf i think and you set up the server uh, address and then I burst and then it's configured you might have to restart it after that it's pre pretty basic stuff actually as you will see in YouTube videos set up some users use a grep command to write uh, what you found in a file to another file uh, find all mm, files owned by user blue and so on and so forth so basic uh, writes setting up rights for a folder using a group sticky bit so pretty basic stuff uh, with access access rights there might be as well some um, uh, acl access rights settings i didn't get that in my exam but yeah it it might it might come up so that all i've talked about now was on node one at the end of node one I got a container question that I did not manage to solve so I got a 0% on that as well because the question is so made even okay so on questions if you, even if you do like half of it um, you have like checkpoints so uh, let's say uh, you need to find all files owned by blue and then write the name uh, of the files in a folder and then copy that folder to another folder so I think these are uh, like uh, three steps and if you do the first step and the second step you get five points and if you do the uh, last step as well you get ten so even if you solve a question like half of it you still get points which is very nice so I managed to get on that container question zero points even though um, I could create a container I was supposed to create a container uh, from file logging in I uh, lost a lot of time on that so yeah uh, what happened was that I had to log in into a contain uh, into a repository into a registry download an image uh, then create an image with um, uh, a folder linked locally to the container so that uh, the files can be uh, can be synced 
so you do that with uh, dash v but the problem was that you have to generate the systemd files and then move those systemd files generated by your container to a specific user in my case it was something like valhalla so in username valhalla so when i had that uh, that container file as a service generated i could not run it and uh, that was the question to make it run after rebooting so it is persistent for a specific user so maybe that was the bad approach i created the container as root because as the user i was getting some errors and when i logged into the user valhalla i could not start the container even though i gave it access rights and whatever uh, did the ch ch mode 777 on it i could not get that thing to uh, to run on the user so i couldn't start the service for the user valhalla so i got zero points on that very disappointed but i managed to save the exam doing the rest uh, the rest of the questions with the access rights and uh, network configuration there were, there was also a cron job so we have to set up a cron job for a specific user yeah i think that was on node 1 as well and the second part of the exam is on node 2 so you have two machines you get to the second machine there you have to reset a root password so you don't know the root password for the second machine in my case yours might be different so you have to reset the root password then uh, set up the repository um, address the default repository addresses again and then do some access rights stuff on there as well other than that mm, i don't remember anything special oh yeah you had to uh, sync uh, to do an auto fs folder sync with an external server and the good thing was that when you did that the server exporting the file systems was already exporting so you didn't have to do any stuff for the server you had just to configure your client to receive the exported folders which is uh, easier so to say the complicated process is to also do the exports but that might also come in the exam i don't know uh, in what in the version i had uh, in the questions i had i did not receive the uh, uh, the conf did not receive in the question to do the configuration for the exporting server i just have to do the uh, the configuration for the client so yeah that was about that the rest of the questions on node uh, 2 were about uh, setting up a swap file mounting it uh, second thing was to create um, a logical volume so that means creating an extra partition, partitioning it, uh, creating the uh, physical volume, volume group, and then the logical volume with extents. So you have to create a volume group with uh, eight megabyte extents, for example, and then create the logical volume with uh, 10, eight uh, megabytes or 100 times eight megabytes uh, extents so 100 extents so that would be uh, 800 megabytes and th thirdly to resize a logical volume you just do uh, lv uh, resize then i don't know minus uh, capital l uh, write in the size mb 100 mb maybe and then dash r to skip the resize file system command so that it formats it uh, automatically as well so those were the questions they were not hard i spent my main my main uh, thing was that i spent so much time going through all the tutorials writing so many questions uh, going through so many examples like stressing stressing out a lot not wanting to fail the exam because this this exam is like 500 euros maybe for you is it's not that much but 500 dollars for for a person like me who um, has to think about money is quite quite a lot so yeah uh, these are the things that i i went through and i hope you could learn something from uh, from my experience so yeah in the end i want to mention that um, i spent a lot of time learning uh, a lot of stuff where I should have looked at the actual exam to see how it looks like and 
if I were you, like my personal advice for you is to look at videos, yeah, see how the actual exam is like and uh, not spend too much time learning the wrong stuff but concentrate on the right stuff to learn. I also recommend you to put a greater focus on containers so that you get it running every time, no problem and debug all kind of issues with containers and how uh, how they run, how they are set up for a user persistently over reboots. So that's that's the biggest biggest thing uh, to 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 work on. And I worked on it. I personally did a lot of work with containers to make sure I understand everything is top notch. And I still failed. <laughs> I got zero percent on it, even though I learned about uh, learned about containers a lot and the second thing is to not use the GUI NM2E so yeah so don't don't use the GUI setup for uh, for the network configuration just do it the classic way yeah another accent would be the access rights for users make them second nature finding stuff with grep finding files with the find command uh, there was also a question with uh, compression so you just have to create a, a tar archive uh, with bzip compression uh, bzip2 bzip2 was not installed so you have to install it on your system so dnf uh, install bzip2 and then yes or dash uh, y so yeah that these are the things you should focus on so just look at the questions uh, see some video tutorials see what kind of questions they are and try to master those topics that you actually find in the questions also one more important thing is to watch out for outdated materials so for example videos videos are outdated so you don't have to install videos separately you do it from uh, the LVM so when you uh, create an LVM you can also create it as a video you don't need to install a separate package uh, for that as far as I can remember but there are some questions where I have to install the VDO package separately so watch out for outdated uh, RHCSA 8 questions those are usually um, two years old videos, three years old, so look for videos that are one year old. In the description below I will link such videos as well just for reference to for you to get as many questions as possible to see how they look like, interact with them and so on and so forth. Okay, so yeah that was from, from my port um, all I had on my head. So yeah that was my impression of the exam, it was a pretty easy exam. Uh, because maybe I learned too too much for it I still got a pretty bad grade on it but yeah I think it depends on your uh, on your luck I didn't manage to get the containers running the network configuration was horrible because I tried to do it with NM2E because I wanted to you know make it faster but it went it went against me so all in all it's a great exam it's not that hard just do a lot of practice practice questions that come from the actual exam so maybe like leaked questions and you should be fine if you are comfortable with them the exam is not that much different from the stuff you will see in the videos below that I will link to um, uh, in the video description so I wish you best of luck give this video a thumbs up subscribe to the channel for more interesting content from me if you have any questions just leave them down below and I will try to uh, answer them as soon as possible. So yeah, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.